Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we have a nice box opening with some fragile items inside. I will say inside this there will be starter decks, old starter decks. Uh, and the reason I like starter decks so much is because they are the only way to ensure you get these old cards from these old sets without it being searched. Uh, so for those that you don't know, when you have what they call wax packs, they aren't actually made of wax, but it's the booster packs with the white at the top and bottom. Um, in fact, I have my um, Antiquities one that I opened up a while ago right here. Uh, so these packs that have the white up there and on the bottom, the white is see-through. Um, so it is actually what they call searchable, which, mean, which means without opening up this booster pack, anyone could technically find out what the cards are. Now it does require you to, I've never done it myself, but I've heard people will like use their fingernails and will like, I guess, squeeze up the cards that are in there. And there's a little bit of a, um, this is a good condition pack, so I don't want to like actually do it. Um, they, they will squeeze the cards up such that some of them are at the bottom, but some of them go up towards the top there, and you can actually then see like the mana cost or the card name of the card through that white area uh, with a bright light. Um, so they would, you know, maneuver the pack such that they're they're pulling cards up that would be, you know, a few cards in at the rare slot or whatever, uh, pushing some down. They'll use their fingernail and will push down on some of the cards while having the rest of the cards be on top. Um, and in that way, you can find what the rare of the booster pack is. This is only possible on these wax packs with the top and the bottom being white. Um, so it's not possible on, you know, any of these other kinds of packs. And I got a 5th edition, got a 6th edition, um, you know, 4th edition even. Um, they moved away from these wax packs uh, right around the 4th edition time, uh, knowing that they could be searched and looked at, and it wasn't the best long term, but all the early packs started with that white pack, uh, what they call wax pack. It's, it, it's not wax, it's plastic, um, but that's just kind of the name of these. Um, because it's a very thin white plastic, um, so that's, I think, where the wax idea came from. And you can see through them. Um, I think Rudy actually even has a video where it might be like a revised pack, I guess, or something. Uh, he has a pack where you can look right through even this oval area and see, when he has a bright light on it, that there's a Sarah Angel right there. <laughs> um, I, I can't see through it on the Antiquities pack I have here. Um, and this is in, the part of the reason I bought this, besides being a good deal, is it's such good condition that... I actually don't think it's even been searched, but honestly, I, I just, I never trust it. Whenever you buy these packs, you are buying them with the assumption that they are searched. Um, the cards in here happen to be rare enough in general that as long as you get the pack for a good price, you'll come out ahead. And then they're also just so rare to get sealed that people will collect them and grade them um, in booster pack form, which is, I think, what I want to do with this one. Um, is because there's no there's no like marks of like fingernails on these sometimes you'll see the corners really really scrunched up this doesn't seem to have that um, so that's part of why I bought this I really do not buy much of these this is my oldest individual pack I don't even have any of the alpha beta or revised ones I thought about buying an alpha one <sighs> it was graded a seven I would have got a good deal on it um, I just didn't want to reach that much into my pocket uh, to uh, invest in Magic cards um, at that time. Uh, and so I, I, I shied away from doing it. Um, but I have invested elsewhere. And starter decks are where it's at when you want to get cards, old cards, because starter decks cannot be searched. So I think you've seen me um, buying the unlimited starter decks I know on this channel. You've seen me buy the revised starter decks on this channel. Um, you know, if I could get my hands on some alpha and beta for a good price, they're extremely rare. I would invest in those at the right price. Um, but those are not searchable. You can't see through the box. So as long as the outer seal is in good shape and you either have a lot of experience knowing how they, those get wrapped up and should look, uh, or you re consult with an expert, uh, which I, I have my experts that validate uh, this stuff. Um, so as long as they give you the clear, then you are all set and good. And I have several uh, packs that I'm able to compare against as well. So that's, you know, harder for people that are just getting their first uh, big investment. But when you've dealt with 
you know, many dozens of these packs, you get a feel for the plastic on them, what the, the wrap is, and then when you have a third party that you know has been a historian of the uh, magic sealed product over the last, you know, 30 plus years, um, you, you know, you're in a good shape. But um, in here, I have product that came from somebody that found it in a um, storage unit. So I imagine in my head like storage wars where the the people go and bid on a lot not knowing what's inside. They open it up and then they find some product in there. Well, this guy won that product uh, from the uh, bidding on the storage unit. Uh, I don't really know the full details outside of uh, he found it in a storage unit and sells a lot of different things from those storage units. I actually am buying a lot more from him. These are just the first couple pieces. So um, I'm going to open this up. And now what I'm wondering is, how good is the condition really? So first of all, the seller is not a Magic the Gathering dealer. Um, so, you know, you, you never know how the quality is. Like, they could judge the condition to be really good when it's actually not. And this was stored in an air-conditioned unit, uh, temperature controlled. So that's good. Well, I can already tell the packaging is not great. Uh, we're taking that off the top but maybe the condition of the packs themselves are. Um, well, no, that's buckling for sure. Um, you know, uh, I'll have to think about if it's worth what I paid for it. Um, so it is sealed, uh, so that's good. I have a, you know, a sealed pack here. Um, a little beaten up. Can, uh, looking around the camera, I can show it a little closer to the camera there. So you see that buckling there? That's my biggest concern with it. Uh, otherwise, uh, it looks like the seal's not undone. Uh, it's a little bit raveled up there, but it's definitely um, still sealed. The seal looks legit and everything on it. Um, so I guess I just won't expect these to be in the very best condition. Um, that's okay. Um, but the cards inside look like they should be all in good condition, so there's that. Um, and then I got one more in here, another revised box. Now this one, let me look around the camera where it's a little easier for me to see. Okay, there's a little bit of buckling going on there. Um, let's see if you can see there, yeah, on that edge right there. Um, but otherwise this is in a little bit better condition here. A little bit of a buckling at the bottom. The seal looks legit though. And the cards inside should be in good condition. So, yeah, not the best revised starter decks I've ever seen. But again, these are highly collectible. Uh, revised, the boxes go, I think we've said before, anywhere from like 10 grand or, or I've, I've seen them go for eight grand eight grand all the way up to 20 grand is everything that i've seen for the revised booster boxes so if you want a a, a booster pack the only way to know that it's not searched is to have evidence that it came directly from a sealed box so now we're talking like unless they're doing box breaks which means those booster uh boxes are being opened in order to individually sell um, uh, you know, individual booster packs. Unless you're dealing with that, you're dealing with these starter decks. Um, so these starter decks are the way to be a more affordable way for people to pick up revised cards and open those up. And so these are definitely going to retain their value. Um, there's just, there's no way people, uh, they're going to want to have packs that they know aren't searched. And this is the only digestible way to do it. Um, other than doing box breaks. So, um, yeah, uh, these, I'm investing a lot into these revised starter decks and just wanted to share that with you um, because all these starter decks are the way to go. I would love to get my hands on a beta starter deck or an alpha starter deck. Uh, again, I, I, I had an opportunity to invest in an alpha pack and the reason I didn't do it was just because I had to assume it was searched. Um, it looked in pretty good condition, um, you know, a 7 out of 10, but uh, uh, the grading companies do grade uh, PSA pretty uh, uh, strictly. It looked like a good condition packed. It did not look like it was searched, but again, you, you just don't know. You have to assume it was, 
And the seller wasn't trying to hide that fact. They got it from somewhere else, and they're like, I, I assume it's Search 2. Uh, they definitely still have value sealed. Um, they are worth uh, many tens of thousands of dollars for an alpha booster pack, uh, and I just didn't want to put down the money for that. So, um, yeah, uh, starter decks are the safe way. You know <laughs> that it's not searched, and I just want to show that to everybody. Uh, with this opening, and I do think, uh, I just want to give a heads up, I think I'm going to go back down to posting twice a week. I'll probably post less of my draft strategy videos uh, for a couple reasons. They spiked and had more views than anything else that I ever posted when the set came out. And I think people get the, you know, there's that rush to a new set, that is good to have strategy videos to teach people how, how to draft. And in fact, the interesting thing is draft strategies do change a lot over the course of time as people catch on to different strategies and card pick uh, order changes a lot. So I'm not going to give up on the strategy videos. I still want to do an update on how draft strategy has changed over time because 17 Lands has very good data on showing what a card was picked at rank order wise early on in the format and then over time how it's changed, gone up or down per card. And that's really interesting, especially in Dominaria United here, which has changed quite a bit since the beginning of the format. In fact, I wouldn't even call it a I was defining it as a tempo set in the beginning, and it was. It played like a tempo set in the beginning, and now it's more control grindy based. Um, and people are learning to shut down any faster strategy, any tempo strategy. Not that it's undraftable to do so, but I think more decks are finding ways to prevent you from speeding them out at all, tempoing you out, and instead you you want to be. Um, more controlly, still efficient with your mana though. So you do need to find ways to get out big powerful cards cheaply, which is kind of the rise of all the um, writhing necromass and Talarian terror cards, all those cost reduction creatures. But that's for another video. I just wanted to say um, work is is picking back up to be, uh, you know, I'm getting back towards my 50 plus hours a week. Uh, at work, and with that, I don't have as much time to make and edit the videos, whereas these openings um, are quick and easy to do. I, I always post them unedited. So, uh, also, the more loyal following seems to like these opening videos more. They like seeing the product that I open and what I talk about in my magic investing quite topics, things like that. Uh, I also am having a big sale right now. I've reduced the prices of all my items. Uh, all my higher end boxes, packs, decks, all that, um, by quite a bit. Most by many hundreds of dollars, some by several thousands of dollars. So if you haven't taken a look at my inventory in a while, do so on eBay, TCG Player. That Those are the best places to see my product. Uh, I also do direct sales, which I will discount from the prices of those listings. So if you find anything in my inventory that you're interested in, please reach out to me at manatutormtg at gmail.com, and I can give you a better price than what is listed. Um, but yeah, just want to share this. I have more videos to come, some from this seller, uh, and they're a little bit different than what I opened up here. So uh, I think you will enjoy it um, as uh, we may be actually opening up some cards on the channel. Uh, not something that I can really afford to do with a lot of this big product, but uh, we're going to delve into that a little bit, and I'll, uh, I'll leave the spoiler at that. <laughs> so see you next time. Thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye.